Curtis Calhoun here with MMA News, and today I'm joined by the newly signed PFL featherweight Boston Salmon, who is coming off of a contract win on the PFL Challenger Series last weekend. Boston, how's it going, man? Great. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, obviously, to start off, congrats again on the win. Uh, how are you feeling a few days removed from the win and uh, getting that PFL contract? I feel great. Um, it's always great being back in the winning column um, after every fight, whether you take damage or you don't. It always feels like you get hit by a bus, you know, just the, the training camp that you go through, the, the sacrifices that you make. I'm feeling it now. So it's so giving my time and, you know, giving my body time to rest and recover and I'll be back. Definitely, man. And uh, walk me through what was uh, going through your mind after a win and getting that contract. Uh, what was that whole experience like for you? Uh, pretty cool experience. Um, before the fight, I wasn't really almost similar to the contender ser- um, Dana White contender series fight. You know, I wasn't looking to impress anybody but myself. Right. So it kind of fast forwards to this this past fight. Um, I know what was on the line. I know what was at stake. And um where I'm at in my career, I just wanted to go out there and win. Uh, most importantly, you know, um, if the finish came, if the knockout came, it was going to come. If it didn't, so be it, you know. But most importantly, I was just focused on winning the fight. And uh, it led to bigger things. Um, I got 20% of his bonus from missing weight, right? I got um, my win bo- or I got my win purse, and then I got another extra bonus on top of that for fight of the night. And I got the contract ordered as well, so it worked out great. Sounds like a damn good night. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, Randy Kotora and uh, Vitor Belfort were uh, on the panel for this fight as well. Uh, how much did it mean to you to get praise from guys like that that have been around the game uh, for so many years? Oh, I mean, I mean, it means the world, right? Um, Vitor Belfort, really highly decorated champion and um, striker, so that, that meant a lot. Um, Randy Kotora, I trained at his gym. I've been representing his gym since I've been out here in Las Vegas, you know, so it's an honor to be um, – to get credentials from, you know, some of the greats, you know, Randy Couture and Vitor Belfort. Definitely. And uh, I saw that uh, PFL star Ray Cooper, the third gave you some love on uh, Instagram after the win uh, fellow Hawaiian. What was it like getting a shout out from a star like that? Oh, great, man. He's one of the greatest to do it. You know, two time PFL champion, weather the storm, you know, lost to Magomed in the beginning and then came back and t- uh, knocked him out. You know, that was just inspiring to watch. And, um, to see him win, you know, back to back $2 million, you know, or more than that, it's, it, it's pretty cool to see and um, experience. Let's talk a little bit about your story. How did you first get into MMA and uh, what has led you uh, to the PFL? If you did your research, um, I was basically an alternate for the Challenger Series, right? Um, I was scheduled to fight February 11th against Jake Heffernan at 146 pounds, right, for Fury, fight, Fury FC in uh, Houston. Um, that fight was scheduled. Um, I take the fight as a great opportunity for me, you know, just to get back on my feet and see where I'm at. A lot of people don't see the struggles that I went through, you know, um, you rewind to 2017, right? I was the first fighter awarded a contract on Dana White contender series. Mm -hmm. Um, I fought at 135 almost my whole career, you know, from my second fight. Um, my first fight was at 145. I performed perfectly fine under the banner through uh, RFA. I fought Priscilla Frieza, beat him in the first round. I don't think I was supposed to win that fight. I don't think they had me winning that. Or on paper, I wasn't supposed to win that fight. But I knew who I was and what I was going to do in the sport, right? Um, I beat him in the first round. He's a black belt under the ultimate cheetah. I beat him with a liver kick. And um, that's that's his kick. That's the ultimate kick, you know? And I beat his black belt student with that kick. Um, finished him in the first round. Um, I make the transition to, at the time I was training at House of Rue, that was in Las Vegas. Um, you heard of Team Tompkins, um, who else was there? I wasn't training there at the time when he was there because he passed away. And then, uh, I was, I started training MMA. I transitioned from boxing and I, I met up with Ron Frazier, um, who was Randy Couture's coach at the time too. You know, he was a box or one of his boxing coaches when he won the titles. So I linked up with him and I started MMA. And from there, you know, it, it's been a success. Um, I had two fights at 145 in my amateur, you know, and then my last fight was for the tough enough 150 pound title. And then I fought for, I made my pro debut at 145 for RFA. And then every fight since been, at, or I made the transition to, cut down to 135 i mean i i question myself why i've ever done that you know i I don't understand why i did that but you know i can't 
I can't uh, take any away from that. You know, it's, it is what it is. You know, I made, I made, I made the weight. I was successful for a little bit, but I just feel like I never really, uh, never really got the full potential out of me. You know, a lot of people are looking at all the finishes that I had at 35, but man, I feel like shit, you know, I had nothing in me physically and mentally, you know, but at the time I was still young. Um, you fast forward into time, um, 2017, I make the Dana White, Dana White contender series, right? I win that. Um, still struggling to make 135. No one ever saw that struggle. You know, it's never been highlighted. And I, it doesn't have to, right? I got to do with that personally. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm getting ready for a fight. I'm scheduled to fight Augusta Mendes in um, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, he pulls out of the fight. They offer me Jaunio Barcelos, and I agree. I say, yes, let's go. Let's do it. I, I'm, I'm fresh off of contender series. Um, I'm ready to fight. Not knowing that I already had a partially torn PCL, it was like grade two tear PCL, and I was like, "Dude, fuck it, like I'll fight until I can't fight, right?" Um, so, like I said, I accept the fight against Tony, and then maybe about two weeks before that fight, I completely tear my PCL, right? So I go from the highest of highs of getting a contract, being some big prospect from RFA, getting into Dana White Contender Series, signing that that contract, and making my debut, highly anticipated debut, and then you know I pull out of my fight. I'm on the bench for two years. Usually it takes, they say, six, nine, six to nine months to, to heal. And I just never felt healthy, you know, within that, that, the, the two years, you know. Mm-hmm. So I finally make my debut. We're scheduled to fight Khaled Taha. Um, and for some reason, Khaled Taha, um, we're going to fight. He pulls out, you know. And uh, prior to the fight, we did all our research. And uh, I suspected that he he was probably on steroids, man. You don't just, you don't look like that at 135, you know, just brood and stack like that. We're just being on a natural supplement, you know, that just doesn't happen. And we thought about it. No big deal. We're going to make him, you know, we're going to make him pay for um, doing what he did. Right. Um, mm. Fight, man, I lose in fucking 25 seconds. You know, I've never been knocked out in my whole career and it happens. Right. Um, that whole, I'm sorry, that fight actually got canceled. So it got postponed and they offered me how Barcelos again, and uh, it was like a week before my fight, and I I, I turned it down. I'm like, no, nah, that's just not what was on the agenda for us, you know. Uh, we're coming f- fresh out of surgery, you know. Um, we're getting ready for Kalita. It's a change of opponent. It's probably not a good idea, right? We're going to fight him from before. We kind of already knew what was going to happen, and, you know, plans changed, so we denied it. So I got put on the bench for how long, you know. It was, it was frustrating. It was super frustrating. Um, I finally get the phone call. UFC 236 happens, right? Max Holloway versus Dustin Poirier. Mm-hmm. Hey, Boston, you're on that card. They want you to fight. Okay, who am I fighting? Kale Taha. Oh, saving me. Kale Taha. Okay, okay cool. We accept. accept the fight. And like I said, I lost in 25 seconds, you know. I got hit once, got punched a few times on the ground, and that was it. The fight was over. Mentally, I, I, I felt like I... I know I could have won the fight and I feel like nine out of 10 times I beat the guy, you know, just, that's just the person I am. I'm, I'm really, I think I'm really fucking good and people know that, right. I just mm-hmm. never had a chance to prove myself. Um, you know, bad weight cut. Um, I did everything under the guidance of uh, UFC performance Institute. So like I had all the tools that I needed to, to be successful, you know, but there's only so much that you can allow your body to, to limit yourself, you know? And I, I feel like I, I went past that limit of making one, one thirty five, you know, um so that happened i lost the fight you know um i go back to the drawing board i'm trying to see what where i went wrong you know so i'm trying to fix these adjustments um a couple of months go by we get scheduled to fight randy costa yes agree um and that was probably one of my harder weight cuts you know i i I recall um cutting weight that cutting weight that whole week and uh i remember the housekeeping was knocking on the door she opened the door i get up fast i go to uh tell her like no you don't need to come in you know and i uh, i catch myself in the hallway like trying to hold myself like because i was gonna pass out you know i'm like holy mm-hmm. shit and she's like looking at me like hey you okay and like it took me maybe like 15 seconds to like recollect myself i'm like yes yes i'm okay uh we don't need uh any housekeeping and um what is that we i think wins are on friday right so thursday we're cutting weight um I do a first weight cut, man, I feel like shit, you know, my, my back is giving out. Those are all symptoms of your, your organs giving out, you know? And, uh, I ended up stopping my weight cut for a little bit. And I was like, you know what, coach, I'm just going to go tomorrow morning. We'll work, we'll wake up early in the morning. We'll check my weight and, uh, we'll cut the last pounds. He said, okay. Um, so we wake up at seven o'clock or whatever it is, six o'clock, six o'clock in the morning. 
I'm trying to cut the weight. I'm just not sweating, you know. And this isn't like it happened once in a time. You know, it's happened almost every every uh every fight and every weight cut that I have, you know. It, it obviously it gets harder with age, you know. When I signed with Contender Series, I was 27, you know. Um two years went by, I'm 29, I'm aging, you know. I'm, my body's not growing anymore. I can't do the shit that I used to do, right? As easily. Um and uh, that's kind of something that I learned. Uh, so I'm sorry, going back to me cutting weight. Um, I just feel my whole body just giving out. I'm not sweating. You know, my girlfriend, my friends, they walk in, which they probably shouldn't have. They walked into like where we're cutting weight and they're just like fucking like tripping out. Like, damn, this guy looks sick, you know? Um, and I look back to like pictures that I have that I save. I look at them I'm like, damn, how did I ever do that? You know, I wish I kind of had a mentor and people told me not to do it, you know, not to be making 135 is too much, but I just mentally, I knew I could become champion at 135, you know, mm. um, I feel like I had an advantage at 135, which I really didn't, you know, um, and yeah, and that happened, I fought Randy Costa, the same thing, everything was just cloudy for me, you know, I, he's another one, I, nothing against, I love the kid, um, really good kid, talented, you know, um, he went on and he made a few highlights, he's two and two in the UFC now, and opponent like that like I, I know I, I beat these guys nine out of ten times you know and I just I wasn't able to perform there's I don't take anything away from my performance they beat me you know and I, I credit 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 them to that but I just wasn't able to perform you know everything was cloudy I went in there I couldn't feel my feet I couldn't feel my hands and I had no fucking chin you know like that like I said I've never been stopped in my career and shots that I take in the gym or in my fights were putting me down you know from um from just like little shots shots that I, I just couldn't see um I lose that fight um obviously very emotional right um I get back in the gym on Monday I do all the testings at um UFC Performance Institute and uh, they do a whole body mass index they do like all these scans to dictate like uh to determine what what's the right weight that you should be fighting at how many fat you know you have on your body your lean mass um so I had this whole portfolio um, from the nutrition staff at UFCPA and everything pretty much indicated um, that I shouldn't have been making weight at 136 or 135. It was basically saying that my my lean mass that I should make was 140. So basically saying that if I was to cut weight, 140 would probably be, be like borderline healthy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I was going four pounds below that and kind of just made sense that I, I had nothing in me. You know, I had no vision. I had no power. I had no awareness you know all that went out the window and it just kind of made sense in my last two fights right so i think it's december now i get a phone call from my manager and i, I know i'm on the chopping block right uh, when you sign in the ufc you get a four fight deal right they don't have to award you the four fights um i get cut fuck you know so i'm going through depression right i'm like damn man like everything that i thought was going to go well didn't go well right um fucking just happen with like a flash you know so I'm, I'm trying to think about my next step and my next move what's going to happen hey, what's going to happen and where, where do I go from here how do I overcome this you know how do I get back to where I need to be you know obviously we knew that 145 was my normal weight and that's the weight that I should be fighting at you know but like now I'm cut now I don't have a home right I got to go backtrack whether it's fighting for RFA or LFA again you know whether it's fighting for tough enough or whatever promotions you know to, to build me up um, so I'm dealing with that, you know, and then COVID hits, bro, right? COVID hits, it's 2020, like, damn, like, fuck, nobody's fighting, right? Um, fast track, um, fights start happening. LFA, um, hosts their first throw, um, show through COVID. Um, I think it's like, I can barely even train. Our gym's not even freaking open. Everything is like completely shut down, right? So I'm training in my garage while I can. Um, at the time, I'm pretty big, you know, I'm one like 170 165 uh we get the phone call to fight that fight right so um, yeah except um and it was from a it was against sean west a kid who i knew from before right we kind of had history we knew each other not going to say we're boys or friends but we, we knew each other right mm -hmm. so i take the fight against him he's a he's a journeyman uh not the best record right um got most of all his finishes were from rear naked you know obviously the guy has no iq um, we take the fight at 150, right? We agreed to take the fight at 150. It was originally stated for 45, and I'll, you know, I'll be honest, we took the fight at 150. It was on short notice. I wasn't going to try and cut, you know, 50, um, 20, 25 pounds, you know, it just didn't yeah. make any. So we take the fight at 150, which is in my way too, right? Um, we take the fight. 
I, I forget what happened. Um, I have at this time I have new coaches, right? Um, I got not not gonna say I got rid of my other coaches, but I needed to get back to my roots, what which made me, you know, successful boxing roots, you know, and uh, I didn't have that from before, you know. Um, I kind of just forgot about my boxing, about what made me, you know, successful. And uh, I linked up with uh, Coach James Gifford. Um, he trained Misha Tate in her championship alongside with Coach Fallis. And I'm sorry, to backtrack to Coach Fallis, um, I'm not sure if you're Robert Fallis, I'm sure you heard of him. Um, he kills himself, right? So, like, just all of that mixing together, man, just just roller coaster up and down, right? My head coach not being there, you know, not, not alive anymore, just not being present, you know, fucked with me mentally, you know. So I got to deal with all these emotions going on, you know. And I looked at I looked up to him as a mentor, you know. Anything that I needed, any advice that I needed, I would go to him because I, I felt comfortable with him, you know. And uh, rest in peace to Coach Fallis, you know. I miss the guy, and I wish he was here. I know he's watching on me and proud of, you know, what we're accomplishing. Um, so that's all happening. Uh, we fight. Uh, I felt great the whole fight. I felt like I was dictating the fight in the first round. Um, took some calf kicks that I shouldn't have, but I made the adjustments. I, I knew what was wrong. We made the adjustments. Second round, I came out strong, almost similar to this this past fight with the the challenger series. Mm. Second round, I started uh, getting his timing down. I'm like, all right, like you know, and I hit him with some shots that that hurt him. Um, dropped him probably twice in the second round. If you know, if I can um, go back and recall that. Um, and then I start getting a little lazy. We get into exchange. He throws a hook. I throw a hook. I hit him. We hit each other at the same time, you know? So he hurts me and I hurt him and he fall. He stumbles. I stumble. I get up. I'm, you know, I'm trying to get up. And that's the only thing I remember. Boom. Fucking I'm knocked out. Right. Last thing I remember is getting my hand raised and questioning my coach. Like, yo, what happened? You know, he's like, you got fucking illegal need. You want, you were winning the fight. You won the fight, but you got illegal need and he knocked you out. I'm like, I don't even know what to think at the time. You know, just there's so much shit going on, you know, and uh, it was just a, a, a big, it was a big thing, man. It was, I mean, if you look back at illegal knees, that's probably number one, you know, uh, people don't see that. Um, so I was in the midst of dealing with that too, right? Just fucking trying to make my comeback you know i make my comeback and then yeah i won the fight but not the way we wanted to win the fight right mm -hmm. i get knocked out and uh they bring me in the back we're at one of the best what is it called uh sanford uh medical whatever i'm not sure what it is but mm -hmm. uh medical, good medical out there right in um south dakota I believe i fought um we're in the back they're you know they're just i just got knocked out right they're doing the whole protocol doctors are looking at me or whatever and uh she, she's just i have stitches right here um hit me he hit me at the illegal knee over here like in this area and uh had had a big gash right here um they're stitching me up the, the doctor's talking to me she's like how you feel i was like i feel good she's running me through the whole concussion protocol i i i'm answering all the right questions you know so like it's kind of cool it's not cool but like it's it's crazy to understand that i was still like mentally there you know even though i got hit from fucking a devastating uh illegal knee i could still answer all the questions you know so somewhat yeah. i was there you know um and i kept telling her like damn my jaw feels broken she's like no did all the testing she's like no you should be fine my coach is like worried you know he's been around the road he has a really good resume um he's been there before right where you know fighters get hit like that and don't make it don't see it till tomorrow you know that they'll they'll pass away in their sleep you know and he was very concerned about that you know and I kept telling him, like, coach, I don't feel right. Like, something's wrong with my face. He's like, can you please check, you know, and make sure he's okay. If anything is broken, they're like, no, he should be okay. And then we get sent home, you know, like, the fuck? Like, if I was in the UFC or any other big organization, I will be sent right to the hospital to, to, to check, to get checked up, you know. None of that happened. So I went home, or I'm sorry, I went to the hotel, and uh, everyone's panicking, you know, my, my girl, my family, my manager at the time. Um just everyone's they don't know what to expect they probably think i'm gonna die you know like seeing that on uh on television that's emotional you know and I, I don't blame them um so we're waiting for maybe about two hours my coach is in talks with you know all my close ones my manager whatever um we make the decision to get rushed to the hospital so we catch a freaking uber from the hotel that we're staying at to the hospital you know and this is like pre-covid you know uh everything is strict like you know just you know how to you know we, i'm sure you experienced all that stuff and uh we're waiting we get a scan 
Um, and this is after them telling us like nothing's wrong with me, right? Um, not even checking my brain and doing none of that, right? So we go to the hospital, we get all of those scans done. Uh, they come back, they give us the, the the records and they're saying like, hey, like your brain's fine. There's no bleeding in your brain. I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Um, but you're going to need surgery. Your overall is broken in half. You're going to need surgery. You know, like this isn't going to heal on its own and you're going to need surgery. So I'm like, fuck, man. I'm just, I'm happy that we made that decision to go to the hospital. You feel me? Because like if a lot of us as fighters, we're, we're, um, we're strong minded, right? We don't want... Uh, we don't want someone else to make the decision for us, you know? So, you know, we if I was stupid enough, I would have stayed at the hotel and just maybe who knows I, I could have died that night. Right. I don't know what happened. Right. It's, I could have had bleeding in my brain. And if I didn't check, we would have never known. Right. But we, we did the right uh, protocols and we did that. We, we, we made sure that we got uh, evaluated, you know, so they checked their brain, no bleeding in our brain, broken orbital, come back to Vegas um, I got to get everything done, you know, and like I said, this is through COVID. I'm having the hardest time to see a freaking doctor, you know, like to see a specialist and then insurance is involved and um, I'm, I'm sorry, insurance is involved, but like that's another process too, right? We're getting, ha we're having all these hard times of getting in, you know, like, dude, my face is fucking broken. My face is swollen, you know, um, my sinuses were messed up, you know, I have a broken fucking face. Um, and I just, I had the longest time to just get in, you know, I'm going back and forth with LFA, like, yo, what's going on? Like, can you get this in? Like, what's up with the payments? Like insurance, this and that. We're just having all these issues. And then uh, I finally get surgery, you know? I finally get surgery. There's a lot a lot of shit going on with just the media, you know, of the illegal knee of what happened, you know? I'm getting a lot of shit on social media. Um, people are concerned about what happened, you know? And uh, I'm just trying to recover and heal up, you know? And uh hoping everything is going well for me, you know, mentally, I had, I, I've been through a lot, man, you got to figure I've been through all that shit, I'm just trying to battle, you know, I'm battling all these demons to see what's next, you know, like, if I can even fight again, you know, or even if I want to fight again, right, those are all thoughts that are being processed in my head, like, damn, like, fuck, like, I, I might have TT, right, like, those are all thoughts that are running through my head, like, shit, like, I want to have a family, I'm young, like, those things might not happen, I might not be able to talk, like, those are just thoughts that are going right when you're emotional, all that shit's happening, you know? So, man, it's been a roller coaster, right? That whole year and a half, right? It was just a whole roller coaster of, you know, trying to get back on, on the horse and, and walk and fight again. Right. Um, and then I fired my manager at the time. Right. So I'm with new management now kind of have basically a new team and it's almost like I'm revived again. Right. Um, I share my story with my management now, he's probably trying to think about what he can do for me. What's the next step. And, uh, I want to get at the time I wanted to get back in the UFC. Right. I'm like, damn, like there's that fire in me. I just want to get back in the UFC. Right. So, okay, well, well, we'll get you back in the UFC. That's not a problem. You know, we know 145, you'll be able to perform, but I think, uh, I knew that they wanted to see me prove myself. Right. They want to know if I still have it in me and I knew I had it in me. Right. I'm in the, I'm in the cage. After I took some time off, I'm like, damn, I still beat up all these guys that, you know, that shouldn't, I shouldn't be beating up, right? Whether they're in the UFC, Bellator, whatever, PFL, uh, whatever. Like, I'm still able to to, to beat these guys, right? Um, none of these guys, like, or for instance, like the amateurs coming up, like, uh, I think Jorge Masvidal said it, right? He's 37 years old. He needs to go now, right? As long as he's in the gym and he's not getting beat up for the young runs obviously he can he still feel like he can do it and i was kind of on the same ship i'm like damn like i still have it i don't think i lost a step you know um i just felt like i was hitting the peak of my career and it just you know it 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 it, it deals for me taking that time off and just mentally knowing what i wanted in life you know and where i was gonna get so um we have all these you know i signed it with a new management I get four, I think four, almost five fights that fall through, right? And I'm like, damn, like, shit, like, how long more can I be doing this, right? It, it's taxing on my girlfriend. It's taxing on my family. that You know, got to worry about this, you know. But ultimately, it comes down to me, right, what I want and what I envision for myself as a fighter and what I love, what I love doing as a passion. And, you know, and I was like, damn, I, I still love this shit. You know, I, I watch fights all day. You know, I, I love being in the gym. You know, it brings a brings happiness to me it brings joy you know so i knew the fire was still there right um so like i said four or five fights fall through you know i was gonna fight for icon i was gonna fight for fury i was gonna fight for xfc all those fights fall through whether 
event canceled or whether the my opponents pulled out, like those things happen, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm over here thinking like, damn, like coming off of two losses in the UFC and being knocked out fucking devastating in my last or in my my third um my fight with LFA, my first fight with LFA. I didn't lose a fight, right? I won the fight, but I got knocked out, you know, like crazy, right? Um, and I've been out for over a year. So I'm just thinking like people are going to want to fight me. You know, they're going to um, question my chin and my ability. I, I get it. I understand. But like, this is my 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 time to prove to them, you know, that you guys are wrong. You know, you guys, the, the people that are done me, you guys are fucking wrong, you know? Um, and so I get the fight with Fury. Um, backtrack to that. I get the fight with Fury against Jake Heffernan, um, February 11th. Um, all those fights pull out. I'm, I'm still, I'm basically in a year camp getting ready, you know, um, just staying positive, whatever, doing the things that I need to do in the gym. Um, I'm, I'm scheduled to fight Jake, Jake Heffernan. I make weight 146. He comes in 148, just like, uh, Du Gyeom Lee, the guy that I just fought overweight. Mm -hmm. I'm like, fuck, like, man, I can just never catch a break. You know, I'm like, you know, F it. Like I'm here. I'm in good, great shape. I'm going to kill this guy. It doesn't matter if he came in at 150, I'm going to kill him. You know, um, obviously it's on a lower level of organization. Um, and I wanted to fight. I was ready. I knew it was the right timing. Everything felt right. You know, so I took the fight and, uh, you know, I hydrate, I look at my opponent, he looks fucking didn't look drained, didn't look sick, none of that. No senses of him being sick or not being able to fight the next day. Mm. So I feel up, I hydrate. I brought family out, you know, um, we're out in Houston. I live in Las Vegas now. My family's from Hawaii. I had my brother-in-law fly. He never saw me fight, never saw me fight in like a few years or whatever, maybe like five, six years. I haven't seen me fight. So he flew up to Houston to, to watch me fight, you know, and I had like my uncle coming out. My, my girlfriend was coming out. Um, the next day I wake up, my manager calls me. I'm like, maybe he's just wishing me good luck, or whatever, you know, calls me. I'm like, I'm like listening to the tone of his voice. I'm like, bro, this doesn't sound right. You know? And he's like, Hey man, uh, your opponent's not going to fight. I'm like, bro, what? This is a day in my fight. What do you mean? He's like, uh, he called us last night saying that he had uh, a fever and, uh, we told him that he can't pull out whatever, wait till the next day. Yeah. So he calls me and, uh, basically telling me that the fight's not on. Right. I'm like, dude, this is the day of my fight. Are you kidding me right now? He's like, no, I'm not, bro. I'm, 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 I apologize. I hope you can make the fight. Um, Ed, um, the, the president of fury is very upset and, you know, he wants to get you back on ASAP. I'm like, all right, man, like whatever. So we kind of, um, I'm sorry. We kind of knew that PFL was on the table for Chandra series. Mm-hmm. Um, but we we're going to get brought in as an alternate, right? Um, basically come in, make weight. And if, um, anybody falls out of the fight, you're going to fill in for them. Right. Um, and I wasn't really motivated to be honest. I wasn't really motivated to do that at the time. They told me I was going to be an alternate. I'm like, damn, I don't want to go out there and make weight and not even fight. Like, yeah, I, just be a backup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, uh, you know, I was more valuable than that, you know, um, but I get it. I needed to prove myself. Um, so my manager calls me and is like, Hey, um, great news. Um, the odds of you getting this fight are, are pretty good. You know, a lot of people have visa issues. Um, a lot of people get COVID, like the odds of you fighting are pretty good. So, you know, stay ready. And this is, if this is something that you're interested in, then let's do it, you know? And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking like, all right, well, maybe we fight for Fury again, right? We'll fight on a lower show. We'll get a win. Um, hopefully we can get in on short notice with the UFC or something, you know? Uh, maybe I got to get two wins and get get in the UFC. But none of that is guaranteed, right? As a fighter, none of that is guaranteed, right? Um, I had to look at what was present, what was on the line, and PFL was on the line. And that kind of uh, went green for me in my head. I was like, dude, I, I got to take a I, – I, I need to – take and accept what's available right now and pfl is available so i was like you know what all right i'm in i'm in i'm in pfl um so like, okay and then a couple of days later he called me like, hey i got great news um you're gonna fight do gyom lee um his opponent got injured he's not gonna fight you're in i'm like bro i'm in you know i'm gonna fight in three weeks after just making weight and not fighting so we take that fight same thing um we take that fight on short notice um, I kind of feel like not disrespected, but I just kind of felt like I wasn't important. Right. I get there. I just feel like people didn't really know who I was. Am. I was 
almost being overlooked. Um, that's just the the vibes that I felt, you know. By but, by the fans or just everybody that was involved. Social media, um, like you said, uh, MMA analysts and people that mm-hmm. report fights. Like I didn't really get much love, you know. No one, no one even cared. I'm just almost looked at a looked as some highly prospect that is washed up and doesn't have a draw, you know. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I felt. And uh, even just being there at PFL, I just felt like I was being overlooked. Like no one really knew who I was, you know. And uh, it stuck with me, man, because I, I know mentally and physically, I know I, I'm the man, you know, I, I'm the man. And I still have the chance to to win a million dollars or win whatever belts on the line that I'm fighting for. Right. But nobody knows that but myself and the people that are around me in that close circle, you know, whether it's my coaches or my teammates. We all see the hard work and the things that I, I do in the gym, you know. Um, and, yeah, I, I was the second fight, you know, um, out of four fights. Um, Lee was a favorite over me. And I just knew looking at that fight card that I had a just my personal myself, I just knew I had a really good chance of winning that that contract or, you know, being being um being able to stand out on the card. You know, most of the guys on that card were wrestlers and that's just not what I bring to the table. I'm an exciting fighter. Um, I'm a sniper and I, I finish fights. That's what I do for a living. You know, that, that's never changed. Um and I felt like, I, like again, I, I had a really good chance of winning that contract and, you know, standing out on that card. And that's exactly what happened. You know, I was able to show the world that who I am, you know, Boston Salmon, Boston Boom Salmon. And I'm, I'm here for, for, you know, for a few more years to, to like I said, whether it's me getting that million dollars and getting that title. I'm here, man. It's a real thing. And that's why I said in that interview, um, I'm back. I'm I, I'm really fucking back. You know, I'm here to prove everybody wrong. Mm-hmm. Most importantly, prove myself wrong, right? Obviously, I doubt myself all the time, you know, through this ups and downs. You know, you have to. You have to have doubt, right? Especially what I kind of endured in my career. And I needed to prove myself personally that I can go out there on a big on a big show and win, win fights, you know? Um, and man, what a, what a journey. Fast forward to today. Yeah, definitely. And uh, a lot to touch on there. I just have time for a couple more questions, but... Um, a big thing I really want to ask you about there is, is what is your message to those fighters that are just coming up and, and going through those hard times, like you mentioned, um, not even just in fighting, but just in life in general. What is your message to those uh, uh, guys coming up and going through those tough times? And, and what's, what's your motivation that you would tell them to keep going? We're all different people. You know? um, through life's obstacles, whether you go up and down, you know, those things in, in life are going to happen. Life is never going to be perfect. Um, every fighter, every person on earth, we all have different chapters in our life, you know, and it might not be the chapter that you want or you envision, you know, but when, when the going gets rough, you just, you can't quit. You know, a lot of people quit and they give up. And that's one thing I say strong to, you know, I wasn't going to quit and I wasn't going to feel short of failure. And I stuck with that. And this is only the beginning, man. I, I, I feel like I have a good shot of getting that million dollars and winning that championship and letting people know that, yo, I'm the truth. Like, you know, I, I, that fighter that you guys saw coming up on the RFA scene and contender, like he's back, mm-hmm. not he's back at his healthy weight at 145. And I have much more to prove, man. I'm, I'm only getting started. And, and kind of talk a little bit about the differences mentally, physically, emotionally, how do you feel at, at 145 as opposed to um, earlier in your career when you fought 135 and, and as you mentioned, those tough weight cuts? It's just not, not taxing anymore, you know? Um, the week of my fight, me and Kai Kamako was at Disney World walking seven miles. I wasn't able to do that when I fought at 135. I was miserable, right? I was a grouchy fuck. Like, I there's a big difference right my whole camp i'm thinking about my weight cut what i can eat uh what my weight is at every morning right at 145 it's not there you know um it takes me two hours to cut the weight and uh it showed in my fight that man i can take a fucking shot now i can take a clean shot to my chin right um i can see punches i can see kicks coming at me you know i didn't have that at 135 you know a lot of people think that it's an advantage of you cutting as much as weight as you can just to be the bigger fighter it really isn't you know you got to listen to your body you gotta listen to your heart and I- i'm slowly understanding those things you know day by day definitely and uh last question for me what's your message to the pfl fans uh getting ready to watch you this season and uh beyond too 
the star in town. Um, Brad Ray Cooper, two-time champion, finishing fights at 170. Very exciting. Um, you guys have another Hawaiian fighter in, in uh, the PFL organization. Um, we'll be on ESPN, and I'll be fighting my heart out for, for the people and fans that support me. Awesome, man. And uh, before we go, once again, I really appreciate the time, man. It's, it's, uh, it's been awesome to learn all about your story. Uh, I'll give you the floor and the final word to shout out any sponsors, your team, all that good stuff. I'll give you the final word. Shout out to my, my team at Shoot the Tour. Obviously, I can't name every every um, teammate and friend that has helped me and, and endured me through this camp and, and journey. Um, I just want to, you know, thank you guys very much. Without you guys, none of this is possible, you know. Um, to my girlfriend, Erica Makalea, thank you. You know, I love you. This is not possible without you as well, you know. And to my coaches, um, James Gifford, um, Eric Nixick, Dennis Davis, um, Ron Frazier, Nate Pettit, um, my strength and conditioning coaches, Manny, um, Dion, Quincy, you know, thank you guys. Thank you guys. My, my management team, my new management team, um, Iridium Sports, Jason House, um, Lance Bod, Jacob, you know, without you guys, uh, Jeremy Luchal, without you guys, none of this would be possible, you know, and um, I'm excited for our future. Thank you again for the time. We can't wait for the season and to watch your journey. And uh, once again, I really appreciate the time and uh, getting to know you a little bit and uh, your story. And uh, I'm sure we'll chat again soon. Thank you so much, man.